here's the second part of the battery pack build. You're also going to see me do a little bit of work on restoring some of the uh, old lead acid batteries because I want to have like three or four battery packs total. I realize that I wired the battery pack in parallel instead of in series. That that was in the description of the last video. I caught myself while I was um, editing the video. So it's cool. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to unplug the wires and plug them in the right way. Um, it, it makes me really glad that I used the connectors, the crimp connectors, instead of soldering them. Uh, again, I'm doing this so that you guys can see, you know, how someone goes about this process while negotiating school and work and a social life and just, you know, having your mind on so many other different things, but still trying to get this done. Okay, here is the pack erroneously wired in parallel, which means it is a 7, 14, 21 amp hour, 12 volt battery pack. And what I'm going to do is perform the very simple fix, which means the color coding on the wires is useless. Really, well, so I'm going to go... negative to positive and then I'm going to go negative to positive so we're going to be stacking the batteries voltage so now we got 12 volt 24 volt 36 volt 7 amp hour for the whole thing it's gonna look different for the rest of the video because I'm doing this like 10 hours later, but use your imagination. Real quick before I get started again, um, I just realized in doing that that I also solved the problem with having uh, two 36 volt chargers and one 12 volt charger. I just have to switch those wires around every time I go from one charger to another. So I can have the 12 volt charger at home the 36 volt charger at my fiance's house, 36 volt charger at work, and I just switch those two little wires around depending on which charger I'm going to use, and you'll probably see me do that later. So, again, here's an example of making mistakes and solving problems, and yeah, so cool. Hello, I'm going to show you how I do the batteries. Um, these are already done. I've already filled these up and with water and charged them and they're fine and they're working great. So what I'm going to do is put a little super glue on each of these posts, these little bumps here, which is where you can see from the lid that they were sonically welded. I took a razor blade and scraped off the rough parts of plastic so it's smooth again. That way when I glue it, the lid will sit flat. Uh, This flat cap laying over top of these rubber stoppers is what makes these batteries non-spillable. And then I'll use another charged battery to weigh it down. And then I'll do the next one. Okay, so this is a battery straight out of the recycling bin, and if I shake it, you can't really hear it, but it's dry. There's no liquid sloshing around. Sometimes when they're super dry, you can hear the crystals of sulfuric acid dried up, rattling around inside. And it's a good idea to let it sit and hydrate for a day before you hook it up to the charger, just so that the salts can get back into solution. Take a razor blade and just find a gap in there, all right, and try to pry up the corner of the lid until you can get an actual, like a little screwdriver in there, and then you're going to pop this, you're going to pop those welds underneath, just keep the screwdriver nice and flat, prying up a little, and run it under, pops right off. I don't know if you can see in those holes. 
but let's see I'll look there. the white stuff is the glass mat that the electrolyte absorbs into and that separates the lead plate from the lead oxide plate and it looks like it's in pretty good shape and this is distilled water in a ceramic mug with a glass pipette um, and a rubber stopper ball all stuff that won't get dissolved by sulfuric acid and you just slowly fill it up you don't want to fill it up to where it's overflowing you just want to cover the plates that's it and, and you want because it's it's fiberglass batting inside of these so you just want it to absorb it and be like a wet sponge rather than a jug of liquid okay so it's all filled with water and you can kind of see the water in there just barely covering the plates um, and when I hook it up to the charger it's gonna start bubbling and bubbling and bubbling and bubbling and I don't really want it to overflow and cover my workbench with sulfuric acid. I'm gonna let it sit for a day then I'm gonna charge it then I'm gonna cap it back up and it's gonna be part of my one of my three battery packs. Okay so now I'm gonna sh uh, take you into the other room and we're going to finish working on uh, the battery pack and I'm gonna put electrical wires on things. Up, oh, just come on, I'll show you. The battery lead coming from the motor is really short and they want you to take the battery wire and snake it all the way to that, but that exposes this connection to the elements. So I'm gonna solder and heat shrink uh, longer wire. I'm gonna make this, this wire longer and actually go into the battery bag. Um, so that the connections are all sealed inside the zippered bag and safe from the elements. No big deal. Right, most of this wire is going to be the power cable. I just need to take a short piece off. To go from the battery. And this will be the power cable for the battery pack. And then the main power cable will snake in here and connect to this. This really hurts my hand. Feels good. Like I said, it came with these weatherproof connectors, but it only it didn't give me another side. So I picked up these weatherproof bullet connectors, and they're what I'm going to use. Uh, well, actually, Aha. So yeah, weatherproof bullet connectors that aren't extremely weatherproof, so they're going to have to be contained inside this zipper bag. I can heat shrink this later. Put that wire in there. In the current. So these are ready. When I get the new charger, I'm going to have to do this to the end of the charging cable also. I need to cut this wire completely in half. I'm going to clip Goodbye wire. Goodbye wire. And strip. Yeah, this is 16 gauge wire. It's pretty thin. Nobody online seems to have problems. I'm just going to tin the ends. So the ends of these are soaked with solder. This is probably like the sloppiest, worst job anyone watching this has ever seen, but that's okay. 
I'm fine with that. Okay, I'm gonna tin, tin the other ends. I just burned my toe. Alright, so these are the, the power leads coming out of the motor. You put your sleeve of heat shrink on there. I got the two wires, the two tinned wires held together with an alligator clip. And then I'm going to heat it and melt the solder and fuse these bad boys together. Or just melt some more solder into it. So that's it, that's permanent right there. And the heat shrink shrunk, that's okay though. This heat shrink right here, this is the last thing I ever bought from Radio Shack before they closed down forever. No more Radio Shack. There you go. And then I'll just hit that with a lighter later. Then we'll hit the black wire with the same treatment. This is a pain in the butt. Soldering's hard. Soldering's hard. Yeah, this stuff, this the wires get really hot. But you know, when I started this, I resigned myself to chemical burns, electrical burns, and heat burns. I've lost some fingerprints to the battery acid. The soldering iron has hit me in the foot so many times because I'm working on the floor. I'm using first aid tape as a soldering iron rest. All right, that is a secure solder joint. The black heat shrink. Black heat shrink. It's two in the morning. Um, I lost the footage of the rest of the build because unbeknownst to us, the camera ran out of memory. But all you missed was me hitting uh, the heat shrink with a lighter and you can see the soot from the butane um, covering the red heat shrink. Yeah, anyway, that's wired. It's ready to go. I'll probably end up uh, covering that joint in the cable. Uh, where the two wires are spliced with another larger piece of heat shrink and then covering the entire cable with uh, a cable housing thing. I know they sell them. Make the thing nice and safe and waterproof. Okay. So we got the motor. We got the battery pack all ready to go. Okay, so I still need to crimp some connectors in the end of the, the, the power, but I mean, you saw me do that already, so just trust that it'll be done. And then I'm waiting to get the tools to remove the crank, and then I can start uh, installing it. When the tools come from the internet, we're going to see me unbox them probably, and then start installing this kit. Maybe tomorrow I'll wire everything up to power and just do a quick demonstration of the way everything's gonna work and the motor spinning. Um, until then, it's two in the morning and I got work. So, see ya. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please 
please leave comments, okay? I know it's sloppy. I know I'm sleep deprived while I'm doing this, but uh, it helps. Leave comments, you know, uh, tell me things that I should stay conscious of while I'm doing this, please. Uh, so yeah, good night, good morning, whatever, peace, love, waffles. Thanks for watching.